Greetings, this is Brooke Ruby, the Nostalgia Catholic, with another Isaac Asimov story review. Um, this story makes its first appearance in a rather curious, heavy volume, and with a rather shiny cover, I'm sorry I can't get it all to be shown easily all at once, called The Microverse. Unless there's something in the Okay. And this is actually a robot story. So we haven't had one of those in a while. Let's take a look into it. Okay. Yeah. So this is all talking about the small world here. There's one here called the Living Cell, and it has an article, and then it has a story. The article is called Cell Ecology by somebody named Marcel Bissis. And it kind of talks about how inside, a, say, a human or other body, you've got the individual cells that are kind of like specialized persons. And they kind of live in an environment and so forth. It's kind of a neat article. And then, kind of in that same vein, you have a what's called a speculation story really titled too bad and it's by isaac asimov there's also an illustration this is the only time we have a really credible illustration so the story is on page 75 and it starts off with a recitation of the three laws of robotics and then we have this character named gregory arnfield and Gregory Armfield is some kind of a research scientist, roboticist, whatever, who has designed a very special and interesting robot, which basically can sniff out cancer cells and zap them, or do various other ways, like if there's a bunch in a small area, it can close off a little artery or vein to it so that it you know, it doesn't have nutrition, you can kill off a whole bunch of them all at once. Very useful for things like tumors and what have you, including not only the big tumors doctors would normally see now, but who knows how many little tiny micro tumors where a cancer may just barely begin to the metastasizing. That's a pretty good idea, actually. So we have all this, this robot that's able to do this stuff. And he's the roboticist who's designed this. Now, something else has happened is that we have miniaturization. So, this is set kind of in a time, sort of, um, well, he's done his two books about uh, what we call Fantastic Voyage. I've already reviewed both of the two Fantastic Voyage uh, books. As it turns out, however, this is kind of set in the same context. There's even a fleeting mention in the story about that. Let's see if I can find it because it's really kind of fun and interesting. Because it says, well, we could send humans, but it's way too wasteful, so it's not really practical. Something like that. So it's kind of funny. I guess the idea is we're not quite yet ready to miniaturize human beings. But one thing, there's a peculiar risk that it could begin deminiaturizing spontaneously due to, I don't know, quantum things that haven't been dealt with very well or solved yet. And so there's a small possibility, non-deterministic really, that might cause it to expand suddenly. And obviously you wouldn't want this thing to expand to size while it's inside somebody else. Uh, obviously same problem you had before where you had to make sure you got all the little bitty pieces out so they make they get this robot he goes in he's going to be he would be dying of cancer he's refused all other treatments but the robot is sufficiently developed that it could do it, as long as he's fortunate enough that it doesn't expand or anything. And it is a robot. It has the three laws in it. Very important. So the robot is inside his system, and it's going around 
and it's doing its thing. And he wakes up, and it's a success. It's a complete success. His wife is there, and he's all happy, sort of, but at the same time, there is some news that she's been given the task of uh, breaking to him, and that is that they did not recover the robot. See, the robot was supposed to go to some certain location where they could find it, then they could take it out, and then it would revert to full size where it's no longer inside him, so then it's okay, it won't hurt anybody or anything. Uh, it wasn't supposed to get any smaller. You make it too small, you know, it becomes like the size of a neutrino. It can shoot among the atoms and just basically disappear at the speed of light. And apparently that's what happened. Apparently some burst of gamma ray radiation from wherever it went was actually even detected. So we know this is what happened to it. But why did it do this? Well, okay. That's I'll I'll, I'll I won't spoil at least that one small detail. Beyond the bare bones of actually this is quite a hint. It's got something to do with the three laws. But the illustration is probably the most realistic one. The way that the robot is described. It probably looks a lot like this weird looking thing here. That, that thing there. At the top, a pointy little thing that looks kind of like a head. It's not its head, or at least not its brain. The real brain would have to be in the main part of it. There's nothing but anthropomorphism that says you have to have the intelligence inside a head type thing. It mentions that. So it's kind of a nice realistic portrayal of this thing as it goes about inside him. So it was his robot. It was his pride and joy. He worked on it. Sounds like building another one is... I don't know, not very easy or feasible. Maybe you would think to save the drawings. There always seem to be inventors who do that story. They come up with some extraordinary invention and either succeeds or fails or whatever. But you lose the invention one way or another. And it's gone. And you go, well, who knows if I'll live long enough to make another one. I don't know, to me, that's just another shade of there are things a man was not meant to know. Yeah, you know, like why would a robot destroy its creator? So many used to do that until Asimov came along. There's a couple exceptions he'd known of. Uh, you know, Bender did one called iRobot, or a thing like that. And there was, I uh, think Ray Bradbury had done a story like that. So. Now, that story first appeared in that Microverse book. It appeared not too long after in an issue of his own science fiction magazine. And even gets the cover. A new robot story by Isaac Asimov. And that's supposed to be the robot story. See, it's got the big name and the first thing. So it means that's the cover story. So this is supposed to be the robot. Obviously, before it gets miniaturized. But it seems to have a lot more of a head face. It's not exactly accurately portrayed. However, on page 18, which is where the magazine says it is, too bad, page 18, Isaac Asimov. We go to page 18. And again, close enough that that is obviously the robot we're talking about. There's some sort of a metastasizing thing with the person laying there. Too bad. Oh, and this time it comes a little squib called In an effort to save his creator, a brave robot must tread a perilous route. So, that drawing by Gary Freeman here. More artwork. From the microverse. Oh, he has another picture here. It's actually somewhere inside the book. Okay. But. At any rate, that was there, and fortunately, one more place that story has been gathered. It's just called Too Bad, okay? It has also been gathered into the book Robot Visions, 
which is almost all just robot stories, most of which have already been there. It'll be the title story, Robot Visions. We'll get to that at some point before too long, which story made its first appearance in this book. And then it had Too Bad. And then after that, we've got all these others we've already reviewed. Started everything from Robbie. Um... So it says, clear up to Christmas without Rodney. But it's all stories we've already covered. I'm looking at the titles here. Robbie, Reason, Liar, Runaround, Evidence, Little Lost Robot, Inevitable Conflict, Feminine Intuition, Bicentennial Man, Someday I Think, Segregationist, Mirror Image, Lenny, Galley Slave, Christmas without Rodney. So there they are. So except for Too Bad, which we just got to now, and robot visions we'll get to soon. Everything in this book is just stories we've already got. But at least there's one other place that's probably the easiest place to find it now. Because the others, you get, otherwise you're going to get the whole great big microverse book, which could be interesting in its own right. Or you track down this magazine here, mid-December 1989, Isaac Asimov's Science Fiction. And that's that story. Thanks for listening.